G'day, Rick here, and today we're going to have a look at the new tables feature that has been released in Obsidian 1.5. Now, at this stage, it's only available to insiders, those that have a Catalyst license. If you don't have one, I encourage you to do so. It's only $25, and it's a one-off lifetime payment, but it supports the development of Obsidian. So give that some thought if you haven't got it, and you'll get the, the latest insider builds as soon as they are available. So on the screen here, you can see that this is Capano's post in Twitter on the 21st of November, announcing the tables. I'll just play the little the video script because it, it shows you what the what they can do, how you can shift rows around, columns back and forth all over the place. And this is such an improvement on what we previously had in terms of trying to write the tables in Markdown. Now they are still all stored in Markdown, it's just that this makes it a lot more user friendly to build your tables. So what we're going to do is to go through and have a look at, at how you do that and how you can make them 100% width as well with a simple CSS snippet, which I'll make available at the end of the video. So we're just starting with a new note here. All I've got is the property section up here for reasons that I'll show you later. So we're just going to go in the note and put a table in. You can do Control P. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can have your tables inserted with a hotkey and attach a hotkey to it, or just go to the command palette and with a control P and then type by insert and insert table comes up, as you can see here, and click on there and you've immediately got two column, two row table that you can work on. Now clicking anywhere in these with right click will give you a number of options that you can use. With rows, you can add a row before, so there, now we've got three rows. We can add a, add a column, column, add column afterwards. Now we've got three rows and three columns. And then it's just simply a matter of populating the table. Now this is where it does get a little funny because you watch the screen here and you can see how we've got this huge area. So we're just typing column one and then tab across to column two tab across to column three, and the, then we move down into the next row. So we can just put four, five, six, tab uh, there, and let's just say that's it, and we've got well, one, one more row there. Right, now that row, we don't want that, it just seems to be adding them, and then the table is formatted like that, and that's how it will look once you've once you've exited. So as you can see the tables in here, and it's probably got something to do with the fact that my the width of my display screen is limited so that I can run it at all sorts of sizes and the, and the width is going to stay at that width for reading notes because I find it comfortable at that width. So what I've done is that I've written a CSS snippet, as I say, which I can apply so that the tables are always 100% width. So in here, where I've got this property, and I'll show you how to do this, I've just got use the max width CSS class, and you can see straight away that the table is now 100% width. So that's all there is to it, and that will make sure that it maintains that, that, that spread. So we'll go into another note now that I've just shown you those things, and I'll give you a couple of examples of how you can apply the CSS snippet and what you can do with it. All right, now we're in a new note, and this is one that I use my note template to create. It's already pre-populated with a number of bits and pieces, and I've copied the table across and expanded it from our demo note in the last section. So what I want to do here is demonstrate to you in the properties area, these are the properties that I have pre-populated through my note template, and I can add another property, call it CSS classes, and I can make it max width there, it's already remembered it. And you can see now that the table has gone completely across. Now, there is another way that you can do this, and that is actually including this into your note templates. So I've already done that here in my note template. I've got my CSS classes up the top, I've got the max width set, and then I can call that template and that was automatically going to create my 100% tables. 
If you use the banners plug-in, you can probably put the banner CSS class up there as well, but that's that's for another story. So let's just leave that for the moment. Okay, let's have a look at this CSS snippet. On the screen here, you can see my little file, and it only consists of, what, four lines? Uh, these are some notes at the top to explain what you need to do with it. Now, the, I've called the file tablewidth.css. Uh, all it does is, is set a class, a CSS class, for the maximum width of the table and says that it has to be 100% and that it's important. So it can't be overwritten. Now, once you've saved this file, you save it to your Obsidian uh, vault, and you'll see when you go there, you've got Obsidian. Now, that's a hidden directory, so you may have to have it disclosed, but I have all mine done. Uh, so double-click on that, and you will find that you've got a snippets folder, and that's where you have all your CSS snippets. So these are all the ones that I have added, uh, and this is the table width one that you can see there. All right, so it's in, it's stored within the snippets folder beneath the obsidian folder in your vault. So if we close that, and we can close this now, and if we go across here and down to the settings in obsidian, then we need to go down to appearance and scroll down here, CSS snippets, make sure that the table width snippet there is turned on. So if you turn it off, turn it on, and then go up here and click on here to reload the snippets, and that way it will make that snippet active within your Obsidian Vault. Okay, back to our Obsidian Tables demo. Now down here, down the bottom, we've got the table, and it's 100% width, as you can see. And now what you can do with this is just move the tables across. So now column one is at column three. Column three is over there. And then column two, well, we better take that back so we can drag it back to there. And so that's reversed those two columns. Now this one, this row here, we can move this up to there. We can move the, this one down to the bottom. All sorts of things that you can do. And as I say, anything with your right click on your mouse can give you rows, add rows before, afterwards, move them up and do down in that area, duplicate them and delete them. So that is effectively your tables that are coming through in Obsidian. Now, this is the first version. I would say it would be a beta, and I can see things getting much, much better from here on in and making tables so much more easy for Obsidian users. So I hope you like this feature. I certainly do. I love it, and thank you very much to Obsidian for doing it. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.